with Mary and George. And what is that your farm called? Is it Whipperwill? No. Earth Haven. Earth Haven. Farm. I, I got somebody else mixed up. <laughs> but there is another farm called that. Uh, anyway, so Earth Haven. And you've been here for a few years. Yeah, 40 yeah. years. Wow, wow. So well, let's walk in and we'll, we'll see the sheep as we go. But so you've been here for 40 years now. How did this place get started? My father bought it for the Mennonite Pony Club uh -huh. to have their shows and rallies. Uh huh. And, and, and so when how he passed away, it came into my hands, and I always wanted to work with draft horses uh -huh. farming, and I've been very fortunate to have the chance. Yeah, yeah. And especially with Mary having similar interests in all these uh -huh. animals. Yeah. <laughs> So, let's see. So you started at a young age. I understand that you used to play with chickens and be found at farms when, wherever <laughs> anybody couldn't find you. They would they would know that you were okay. Yeah, I loved to hang out at the French's farm down yeah. the road from uh -huh. us when I was growing up. Yeah, yeah. And I always had some chickens and ducks. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. You became weed patch a... gardens and stuff. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> And now, you're a farrier now. Yes. And how did you get into that? Well, I was lucky enough to apprentice with Alan Eldon, the farrier that we had chewing our horses. Uh-huh. And um, apprenticing with him was a great chance to learn horse training, too, which I got really interested in because he was a great horse trainer. Uh-huh. And um, he was a great metal worker, too. Yeah. But we shoot horses all over the southern border in New Hampshire, Nashua on down into Hamilton, Massachusetts. Uh -huh. um, and did everything from fancy Olympic hopeful hunters and um, all the way to trimming goat's hoofs too. Wow. He was not too proud. <laughs> well, they the all need it. Mr. Alden, he was quite yeah. a renowned horse person. He judged horse shows yeah. too. Yeah. Isn't it nice to have somebody that can keep your hands on? I mean, books are great, but what would you rather be doing? That's it. He's a great mentor. Yeah. 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 So, and now, as you pointed out, this horse has been a mentor, too. Mm -hmm. um, one way we train is just matching up a, another horse to the green horse. That's how a lot of draft horse people get their horses trained. What meeting. else have you used Belinda for? So you go out and you do my, maple sugaring and things like that? Yeah, we follow the seasons of the year. We uh -huh. spread manure after sugaring time. Uh -huh. And in the summer, unfortunately, we don't use them hanging because the equipment is just so much faster. Right. He has if we done had, it. Yeah. yeah. If we had more Teamsters, it'd be really great to oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be a wonderful go that route. Day? Yeah. But we're always trying to beat the weather, right. which right. is changing all the time when you're trying to do hay. It yeah, seems to attract yeah. clouds when you mow hay. Right. And you don't use her for your gardens or anything like that? or. Oh, yeah. We do plow up the garden uh -huh. and harrow wow. it and that's, that's great. spread manure on it yep. with them and good, good. spread manure on the hay fields. Yep. And uh, anyways. Yeah. So you don't have just horses, though, here. You have sheep and you have chickens? Oh, well, yes. We you have, have chickens. chickens. And you have other horses across the street. You also have people that ride here, it looks like. A few. Yeah. Yep. But he also has a good size herd of beefalo. Oh, yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, um, I got interested in the low cholesterol aspect of raising this cross between buffalo and um, Cheryl Lake cows. Uh -huh. But we also have Hereford mixed in. Um, and. Yeah, grass-fed beef is really probably a buzzword now. Yeah. It's um, a healthier kind of meat if you're going to be eating right. red and meat. It's, so, it's all grass. <laughs> oh, we're all talking here, huh? We won't eat you, don't worry. Sorry. <laughs> so the grass-fed, that is a much better way to go than grain-fed. And you, I mean, you guys, yeah. you know what they're eating. Just walk through Yeah, walk that's around. what it is all yeah. about. Yeah. Um, no hormones or... Um, or uh, toxins in their systems. Mm -hmm. We avoid even fly sprays and trying to have predator predator wasps yeah. and things instead. Right, 
right? Because it um, makes it so much healthier for everybody, not just the horse, but for us too. Everything or the or the oh, um, yeah. the cows. So you're looking at the whole big picture. So who did yeah. we have here? This is Eva. Hi, Eva. George bred Morgans for years. Yeah, uh -huh. All the black ones were born here. And really? So this one was born here? Yes. Uh -huh. Wow. This is a beautiful horse. And Allison actually is the daughter of Matt Patnode. This is Allison Patnode. Mm -hmm. and Matt her does all the farming, really, running the equipment and keeping it going, getting all the hay. Wow. Matt was a lot like George was as a child. I remember Matt being, you know, this high out there trying to lift hay bales. And, and he is an absolute genius with machines. Wow. We are so fortunate wow. to have him. George now and then says, I think I corrupted Matt. I think he's addicted to farming too. <laughs> How bad could that be, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. But we love having Allison here. Yeah. It's a whole nother generation. Right, right. Well, and you know, to me, this is what farming should be. I mean, there's not a lot of room in the, the towns and the cities now, you know, to have farms. But when you go out, just five minutes or so, this farm is not that far out. And you have this beautiful land. How many acres do you have here? Well, there's 25 open acres here, mm -hmm. but we go after hay fields all over town. Yeah. Um, you know, there's well over 100 acres of woods and... I think we own 250, 250 acres. Yeah, some, some conservation, and land. conservation. Yeah, some of which is, and that is actually how we wound up with the beefalo because yeah. there was a piece of property that we had been told by the owners, or it, it was common knowledge that the woman who owned it never wanted anything to happen to it. Mm -hmm. She always wanted it to remain pristine woodland, and then she passed away. And the next thing we knew, these giant logging trucks were going by, taking out loads, hundreds of loads. And it came up, it looked like they wanted to develop it. So we mortgaged the farm, bought the piece, and George is one of these people who, if you hand him a bushel of lemons, you're <laughs> going to get a lot of lemonade. <laughs> and he and Matt and our son Jacob have made a gorgeous field out of a piece of it. That's wonderful. And they now have, he got the beefaloes to, to try to do something with this land that had had a very rough time. Wow. And they're living down there. They overwinter there. They spend part of the spring and summer there. He, we also move them around. I don't know if you mentioned about the conservation piece where they are now on Route 101. Um, we don't own that. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, so we <clears throat> do what a lot of people with a lot of cows do, trailer them to a right. pasture where they can munch out all summer. Yeah, because, you know, pasture is, is a tough thing to find, you yeah. know, because you have to balance between haying and pasturing and, and all of that. But we've been getting a lot of help from the Nanak Conservancy and the New England Forestry Association based in Massachusetts. Excellent. Manages the land over on Route 101, right. Cooper Hill. Yeah. So if people are interested in getting your meat, they come here or do they, you have it in any other stores in Keene or how do they? Um, so far we haven't got that big a herd. Uh -huh. We just have uh, a little over a dozen cows. So we just sell retail right here. Okay. All right. And but, so we'll give you that information well, after at the end of the show as to how the, um, you can get a hold of George and Mary for their uh, beefalo. So we've talked a lot about the farm and it's an inspiration to Mary. So. <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but Mary is an artist, <laughs> professional artist. That's what she does for a living. And what is your inspiration, Mary? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, you know, they always say, paint what you know, paint what you love. And I love George. <laughs> I've seen George she loves sheep. Paintings. Sheep yeah. are her models. I, I really. That's her rationale with a sheep, but yeah. you're in, productive too. Yeah, I do have these 30 odd sheep here. And I love to paint them. Yeah. Um, I love to paint the draft horses. I particularly enjoy painting drafts, I think because of the bond, the bond with the land and also the bond with the Teamsters. Yeah. I yeah. mean, as George was saying, this is a mentor. She's, she's not that old, but she's a really wonderful horse, and the, that rapport there is really wonderful. Well, and I feel like they're gentle giants, too, because if you know how to to control a horse, they are just peaches. I mean, they're, look at this horse here. She, she doesn't take anything to take care of. Granted, I know that there's been a little bit of training here, but look at how big this horse is. If, you, yeah. if that horse wanted to get away, it would definitely be able to do what it needed to do. And to a certain extent, the gentle giant thing is sometimes misunderstood a little mm -hmm. bit because 
draft horses can be very, very hot. Right. And people sometimes buy them thinking that, oh, they're, they're so, so gentle. Yeah. Oh, look how they used to be on the farms. Anyone could do anything. Well, they forget that those horses were working 12 hours a day. Right. And that they had had years and years of work. Right. And that's a big difference. And it's also different personalities to different animals. Mm -hmm. um, he's got those two mm. youngsters there and a third that someone's borrowing. They're completely different dispositions. Right. One is extremely hot, one is extremely mellow, and one is right in the middle. And when you're <laughs> saying hot, like in temperament, in, not in, temperament. in heat. Yeah. In temperament. Yeah, right. Tending to be... Excitable. Excitable, <laughs> right. nervous. The Morgans that we have really are a challenge. Um, you need to have a really strong personality, like Allison has, to not have a horse like Eva take advantage. What she'd like to be doing is the same thing this horse would like to be doing, munching out on the grass. Right. And she's been training her to obey and stand like a lady. Well, <laughs> and she she's good. a great rider. This horse has been rowdy enough to throw her off and she's gotten right back on. And but and they're also more mellow than solid a thoroughbred. Solid seat rider. You know, the, a great they're balance. a good family horse. A, a, assuming that you get the right horse in to train it right. and are trained yourself to right. some extent. So, Allison works a lot with a trainer mm -hmm. herself. So where so. are the trainers, where do you go to learn how to ride a horse? Well actually there's a um, trainer up the road, her name's Cindy and she helps me with training Eva and training me to be a better rider. Mm -hmm. and Nice, nice. <laughs> and well, then I take Allison out on the, wild excursions <clears throat> in the rain. Oh, <laughs> I, I hope you'll talk about how good the Romney fleece is for hand spinners. Yeah. And my, my breed of sheep, we'll have to get them over here. Yeah. Maybe we'll yeah. get them over here. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. yeah. Why don't we let you guys go? Because I know, George, you've got things to do. You're working on a farm here. I'm supposed to be doing some hoofs, actually. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Mary and I will finish this up, but thank you very much, George. Oh, thank and you. And thank you again for, you know, bringing your horses down. I'll That's get it, wonderful. Allison. She can drink that. Mary, that was so interesting listening to George, and he's got so much information to share with people about horses. He has taught a lot, a lot of people about horses, uh -huh. about farrier work, um, working draft horses. Yeah. An awful lot of the farriers in the area actually. Do. We'll, we'll be knocked <laughs> over by my little gluttons here. <laughs> As you can see, these sheep are terrified of people. <laughs> so, so we were talking about George. Yes. So he started when he was, what, 14 years older? Um, he started when he was this high. Oh, wow. From, uh, his sisters tell all the stories about George are about George with his chickens when he was very tiny or George and his little farm tractors in the sand pile. He loved farming from the time he was born, yeah. basically. Yeah. It just came in, in the egg, so yeah. to speak. So it's in his spirit. Yeah, it's yeah, really in great. his spirit. That's great. That's... So you met George via ferrying? I was actually teaching at Hampshire Country School in Ringe, mm -hmm. and I decided I had no responsibilities other than teaching at that time, so I would get myself a horse. I was also teaching the riding program. I was teaching the elementary disabled kids. Well, they weren't disabled, but emotionally Challenged. disabled. Yeah. yeah. And they, I was teaching the riding program, and I thought I'd get my own horse so that they could have more. And a friend brought me here, and the first day, George lent me a horse. Wow. And <laughs> so that was it. He and needed that was me it. back. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> wow. Wow. And so your typical day now is... Waking up to this beautiful farm yeah. on the top of a hill, yeah. looking out the window at horses and beefalo and your beautiful sheep. And now these sheep are your, your subjects. These sheep are. I love painting these sheep. Mm -hmm. I, as, as a little kid, I, was, I, I loved horses. I loved drawing and painting. And I was weirdly attracted to sheep. No one could understand it. And I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. I just liked them. And then... As an adult, when I moved here with George, George did not have sheep, but he said, I've always wanted them. Um, Wynne French, the farmer he mentioned when you were speaking with him, had a flock. And he remembered them from being a child, and he just liked sheep. Yeah. 
And I wound up with sheep, and I've, I've loved them ever since. I've had them for well over 30 years. Wow. And, and so what do you do with your sheep besides use them in your beautiful paintings? Well, when my children were small, I couldn't paint while my children were little, mm -hmm. because you know what that, mm -hmm. most mothers will know what that's like. Right, you, you think you're going to have all the time in the world, and you, you have no time no, at all. Not a right. minute. And right. so I couldn't paint, and so I instead worked with wool. It was that outlet for creativity right. and color. Mm -hmm. And I have Romney sheep, and they have extremely good wool for hand spinning. And so I did all of that, and I had a little business selling hand spun articles. And then the kids grew up, and my husband said, go back to painting. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> and, and your work has this a luminescence about it, because you can tell your paintings compared to other people. You just, you do have your style. I think all people have their style. Mm -hmm. All artists do. They always say, paint what you know, paint what you love. I love the farm. I love my animals. I was always really, I still am, incredibly attracted to impressionistic painting. I used to spend literally hours sitting in front of Renoir's dancers at the MFA. That beauty in life, because I sort of think art, art shows you or can show you the beauty that's here all around us and let people suddenly notice that, like the colors and the Impressionist mm -hmm. paintings and the light. And it also is a conduit right into the spir spirituality. Right. And it's that way both for the artist and hopefully for the viewer. Right. And when my lambs get born, they, the first few days of their lives are unbelievable. They have these little angel hairs that catch the light. And they're very inspirational. Yeah, yeah. And within a week, they're little sheep. But that, that beginning, they're little angels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All those, those um, paintings that you have of them sitting in the, the barn in the, in the hay. And, yeah, yeah. And they're just, they are. They're, what makes them so angelic? I mean, they just, they're so uh, innocent. They're so pure. And it, it is some sort of an archetype within us. Most of the people, I sell a lot of sheep paintings, and uh, most of the people who buy them don't have sheep. Mm -hmm. I mean, people who have sheep also do occasionally buy sheep paintings, but most don't. But, there, you know, there's I an think archetypal people, safety there. Yeah, a lot of people love sheep. Yeah. I mean, but how, how often do you have a chance to have sheep? That's so right. That's what intrigues me. I have one of your paintings. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> and, but it's different than a lot of your paintings. This one that I have, has a lot of really bright greens in it. This time of year. Right. <laughs> and it's, it's not that um, the hue from the barn or the soft light. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. It's in a shade area with, you know, the trees on, and it's got like five sheep on it. And it's just, I love it. I look at it. It's right outside of my bedroom. I look at it every day. That's so nice yeah. to hear. <laughs> and so and nice I'm sure hear. other people feel the same way. You know, I, I love going to the gallery. We have a couple of galleries um, locally. There's one in Keene. Uh, does Sharon the Sharon Art Center have your work as well? It does, yes. Yeah. Um, sh the gallery in Keene, Monadnock Fine Art, is now at Anthony Topfer's right. jewelry place, right at the head of the square. And it's going great guns yeah. as an art gallery yeah. still. And I'm well, so pleased. Because it's all art. I yes. mean, the jewelry, the paintings. That's right. Yeah. 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 And now um, you teach classes as well. I do. I and teach over at Sharon Art Center. Mm -hmm. and, and when did you get started with that? I started teaching there probably seven or eight years ago. Actually, right now, there's an exhibit at the Jaffrey Civic Center of my students' work. And it's, it's students past and present, mm -hmm. and some are emerging artists. There are a couple of hobbyists, and some are professional artists. Mm -hmm. But it's a wonderful exhibit. There are over 25 artists wow. exhibiting. And this is July of 2012, so by the time you see this, that will be a, a pass. <laughs> but watch out for those artists because they're emerging. They are, and, yeah. And it's, it's all a transition because you didn't just pick up a brush and become the person you are today. No. What, it, how did you learn to become an, an artist? I, I, like this, I think it's a stereotype mm -hmm. with many artists. She was one year old and we gave her a crayon and she drew a horse. <laughs> and my what mother will tell you that story. Yeah. And so I have drawn and painted all my life mm -hmm. with the exception of the time when my kids were small. I, I'd get up at four and do some painting then, but it, it's not, not intense right. in the same way. Right. But I was fortunate enough in our high school, they had a giant fine art department, and I got an incredible foundation there. We were in that art department probably four to five hours a day, studio painting. And then I was all set to go to, uh, to school for art in Boston, and the last minute I switched to creative writing. 
and I think it's that again. You're creative. It's very creative. But I painted my way through college. I mm -hmm. sold paintings in order to pay tuition. Yeah. So, and my, my family's always been incredibly supportive. I mean, all these people who say, oh, nobody supported me. I was lucky. My school supported me. My family supported me. And then I've, once the kids were older again, I took a lot of follow-up you know, weekends or week classes with various artists yeah. to get a leg up again, to yeah. get going. Yeah, because what I see is the same thing. You know, there's uh, several other artists that are local that were busy. They had their kids, and now you're seeing them really bloom. That's right. Um, That's right. Y you've got quite a few friends. I don't know. Anyway, you've got a, quite a few friends that I've seen the transition of their work, even in the last five or ten um, years that is, is really cool. So, you know, I know you have a, a studio here at your house. We're not mm -hmm. gonna go into that today. Um, we may okay. show some pictures at the end with a little photo montage, but I just wanted people to know that you can pick up a paintbrush or you can you pick can. up charcoal or you can pick up whatever. You can do whatever medium you want. There's so many fiber arts That's that you true. can do. That's and true. so what would your suggestion be for anybody that is interested in becoming an artist or well, if you can, just paint or just do your art, whatever it is. If you, want, if you want to paint, if you want to draw, just do it. And then there are wonderful opportunities to study art. There, you can work with individual artists. Many of them give workshops. Mm -hmm. You can also go to a place like Sharon Art Center, which has a wonderful program. If you don't, it's, it's, more, it's, it's less expensive than taking a college course. And they and also have scholarships course. that I understand. They do have yeah. scholarships. Yep. Um, I know I'll be, I'm teaching an intensive plein air over there and tell in us, August. Everybody asks, what is plein air? Plein air is when you go outside and paint on location. Almost all of my landscapes are on location. Right. I just go out there. I often think under Monadnock at Perkins Pond, they're going to issue me a parking pass. <laughs> <laughs> Every year I say I'm going to do one painting here, but it's so spectacular I cannot right. stop going back. It is. I it do is. paint outdoors a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a real lot. Right now there's a group of artists we're working on a conservancy show. Um, Ryan gave us, Ryan Owens gave us maps of where, of conserved lands and we're all going out and painting those conserved landscapes. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been pretty involved with that this summer. Yeah, great, great. Well, you know, this has just been amazing to, to be up here on the top of the mountain here in my backyard. I love, my backyard is awesome. This I have so many different backyards. This is definitely our backyard. Yeah, it is your backyard. So again, you know, farming, I mean, there, it doesn't take a lot, but it does. You know, it takes a commitment. It takes people that want to be up early in the morning and late at night, but they also enjoy themselves. What do you guys do to have fun? We stay home. <laughs> but do you, do you play music or? I No, we, no. we continue what we're doing. Yeah. I, I can say, we've got a big garden. We used uh -huh. to run a CSA. We ran a CSA for five years yeah. and I still have a big garden. That I consider, quote, hobby. Yeah. Um, George drives his horses. We ride our horses. Yeah. We move our sheep, worm the sheep, <laughs> paint. <Yeah. laughs> so we you're really walking, are living our dreams. You're walking the walk and talking the talk, and it's all one big... I couldn't think of a better life. Yeah. I could not imagine a better life for me. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that you've been in my backyard. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Jody. <laughs> so here we've been in my backyard. If you are interested in being a guest or giving us comments or anything, please email us. And our email address is inmybackyardch8 at gmail.com. And we will get back to you as soon as we can. So thank you again. And, and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> get out and enjoy the outdoors. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>